Hello, my name is Bruce Chadwick, and uh, I spent some time last week preparing the International Capital Asset Pricing Model to teach to Level 2 candidates in the uh, CFA curriculum. At least when I took this exam, uh, I felt that ICAPM was probably the most confusing material in possibly the entire curriculum, and so it took a lot of effort to put this material together, and I thought I would share it uh, with others with uh, not much time to go for the for the CFA exams. Um, hopefully this will be uh, helpful for you. By the way, since I'm putting this on YouTube and YouTube uh, requires 10 minutes or less, I'm probably going to divide this um, presentation into two, hopefully just two, um, sections. Now, uh, to start out, the International Capital Asset Pricing Model basically is an attempt to uh, expand the capital asset pricing model to the international realm and basically what you do is you take the um, traditional CAPM formulation which you uh, should all know by now if you're um, at least uh, concerned with this material and then you add currency effects to it so basically the capital asset pricing model says you're basically paid um, for the amount of market risk that you take uh, when you make an investment and then on top of that there may be some currency effects that you should um, account for and this is what makes the international capital asset pricing model. So just to kind of uh, build up this model um, the traditional uh, CAPM basically says that you ought to be paid um, during an investment for at least at the very least the time value of money that is to say that if you're not going to make more than the risk-free rate on average, then there's no point in making an investment at all. So that's a kind of hurdle rate um, represented by the risk-free rate. And then since you're going to take um, risk, uh, market risk, you could actually earn less than the risk-free rate, but you hope that on average you're going to get more. And so that premium, that average um, that you're going to get more than the risk-free rate is basically proportional to beta times the world market return minus the risk-free rate or basically the world market risk premium. So that's the CAPM model. You probably should all be aware of that by now. Uh, one of the things you want to sort of consider is that actually this equation is the security market line. So CAPM is more about conclusions about what portfolios you should hold, but one of the steps along the way is to show that you should be using the security market line for computing the expected return on on securities. That is one reason, by the way, why people get confused between the security market line and CAPM. Um, it's because actually you're using CAPM, uh, sorry, the security market line to compute things like um, expected returns and required returns. Um, <clears throat> on top of the traditional CAPM, then you have currency uh, effects, and there are really two of them. And I think one of the reasons this material can get it confusing is that I haven't seen many times a very clear distinction between these two. The first one is what you might think most obviously about international investing or investing in an international asset, and that is simply the effect from holding an asset that's listed in a different currency. So for example, if I own Petrobras, which is listed on the Bolsa de São Paulo, its price is quoted in Brazilian reais, and therefore maybe the, maybe the stock will, you know, earn 15% over the year in the local currency, but if the real devalues um, by 10%, then in fact you want to correct for that. You may have only gotten 5% in dollars. More likely, actually, the real has been strengthening relative to the dollar, at least um, before the crisis, so in fact you may get more um, because the asset is listed in a different currency. So this is a sort of obvious um, aspect of holding international assets. But there is a second one which uh, sometimes uh, confuses the people because it's uh, it, the, the equation gets long and uh, the accounting for this is fairly long. So what that is is that the changes in currencies actually affect the profitability and therefore the, um, the return of the business. And this makes this makes sense if you think about it. For example, if Petrobras imports um, a lot of machinery, I'm actually not sure that they do, but let's suppose that they do. They import a lot of machinery. Therefore, the price of the hail versus other currencies will actually affect how profitable um, that business is, and therefore what the return is. And that is completely independent of what you um, of which currency the uh, the stock or security is listed in, and so it's these two effects combined that uh, basically make the capital asset pricing model work, um, or the international. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about direct exposure. That's the more obvious one 
that uh, that we talked about first, simply because it's easier to kind of wrap your your mind around it, um, and it comes back later in a way that's confusing. But if you treat it first, it isn't necessarily confusing. And that is simply that um, <clears throat> what you what you do when you are uh, accounting for the direct exposure, you still have your capital asset pricing model, which has the risk-free rate plus the beta times the world market return. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add a factor that deals with um, whether the uh, currency has changed. So your expected return should be the return that you would normally expect from CAPM plus a return that is um, expected to be the uh, effect of a change in, in um, currency prices. And so the actual amount that you're going to add to the equation is basically listed by one times what you might be called um, a spot rate risk premium. Um, now, what the spot rate risk premium is, is basically the unanticipated change in currencies. And it's important to say unanticipated because anticipated changes should be affected by current pricing um, and therefore uh, are sort of already incorporated into the price. But the unanticipated currency movements, and that's basically the currency movements that can't be predicted by interest rate arbitrage or, or basically the setting of the forward rate. So um, one thing that seems a little unnatural about this, for example, is the idea that instead of simply looking at the currency change, what you're actually doing is looking at the currency change relative to what um, you would predict uh, given the forward price at the time you make the investment. So um, the actual security or spot rate risk premium could be looked at by this formula, the spot rate at the time of the, uh, or even the expected spot rate at the time that the, at the end of the period minus um, what is predicted by the forward rate. And the forward rate is basically the interest rate arbitrage formula that you looked at at level one and probably reviewed at level two as well. Um, and so what you could, you know, another way you can look at this, by the way, is you can, uh, you can uh, break down, I have S1 minus uh, F over, all over um, the spot rate at time zero. You could actually um, break that apart and look at it as the actual change in currency um, rates as a percentage uh, minus the expected change in currency rates uh, shown by the... Um, by the forward price divided by the spot rate at time zero. So there are a couple of different ways you can look at it. Choose whichever one makes the most sense for you. The important concept here is that uh, one that is that the um, spot rate risk premium is uh, a term that basically accounts for unanticipated effects or effects that are not incorporated into the <coughs> into the forward pricing model using interest rate arbitrage. Then the second effect that we want to cover is um, the effect on business profits and returns. And this one is a little bit uh, more complicated. That Basically, you, uh, a, a company like uh, Petrobras could be um, exposed to a lot of different currencies. It could be exposed to... Um, it could be exposed to the euro and the dollar because um, that's where their... Um, importing machinery from. It could be exposed to a lot of other um, currencies because that's where they export their, um, actually I guess oil probably would be connected to the dollar. But the idea is if you're exporting, um, the price change, the currency changes will affect uh, the profitability of your business. Um, if you're importing, the currency changes will affect the profitability of your business because, for example, for example, if you are um, importing lots of materials, then what you're going to be doing is that if your currency strengthens, you'll actually have lower costs and higher profitability. So uh, what you have here are basically gammas, which I show here as G because I can't um, put gamma easily on my computer. Um, and you determine these gammas by regressions showing the returns in the local currency uh, as prices or currency rates change. And on the exam, by the way, they will tell you what these gammas actually are. Um, and basically the entire ICAPM uh, comes from putting together all of these segments together. And um, since we're about at 10 minutes, I'm going to pause here, and then I will start up again um, on a next video.